If you've been paying attention to cryptocurrency lately, you've plausibly heard some buzz around Ethereum 2.0. This fundamental upgrade to the Ethereum network has been in development for some time, and as of December 1st, 2020, the Beacon Chain has become active, and the first validators are staking their Ethereum. Sounds exciting, but what does it all mean? Why do we need a 2.0, and how does this affect those already holding Ethereum? Well, that's why we've created a full review of what Ethereum 2.0 is, and how it'll be changing cryptocurrency. In this video, we'll be covering how Ethereum 2.0 is different from Ethereum 1.0, how will this affect holders of Ethereum? The timeline for the Ethereum 2.0 rollout. And finally, at the end of the video, we'll cover how you yourself can become a validator on the new chain. By the time we're through, you should have a pretty solid understanding of what's coming for Ethereum and know whether or not you want to get more deeply involved. So let's roll up our sleeves and jump right into it. In order to understand why Ethereum 2.0 is such an improvement, we need to take a peek at how Ethereum 1.0 currently works. First of all, Ethereum, much like Bitcoin, is a blockchain. If you need to brush up on how blockchains work, then check out our previous video in which we explained Bitcoin. This should get you up to speed on the basic process of block verification. Ethereum, however, does even more than just verify transactions. Ethereum also utilizes what is known as a virtual machine. A virtual machine, or VM, is basically a computer that is emulated on other computers. By using this technology, the Ethereum network basically amounts to a global computer that anyone can access. Thanks mainly to this ability, developers have created a variety of decentralized applications, or dApps. From a user's perspective, dApps work much like normal applications, but under the hood, they allow for a variety of services that can be offered without a central company or authority regulating it. That's fantastic, and the Ethereum blockchain that powers all of this works wonderfully for the decentralized and trustless aspects, but it can be an issue for scalability. You see, traditional blockchains suffer from what is known as the trilemma. The trilemma goes as follows. In order to ever reach mass adoption, blockchains need to be decentralized, secure, and of course scalable. However, with proof-of-work systems like Bitcoin, blockchains have to generally sacrifice one of these in order to boost the other two. Ethereum is highly decentralized and secure, but it's difficult to scale. Tron is secure and scalable, but this is because it's highly centralized. If Ethereum, or any blockchain, wants to truly scale to become a worldwide adopted platform, it's going to need to be able to solve this trilemma, and the developers of Ethereum 2.0 believe they've found a way. By using multiple new techniques, the hope is that Ethereum can go from just 15 transactions a second to a much more formidable tens of thousands or more. The primary ways that this will be accomplished include switching from a proof-of-work blockchain to a proof-of-stake blockchain, as well as implementing a process called sharding. We'll explain both of these now, starting with the significance of switching from proof-of-work to proof-of-stake. First, let's talk about the current model, proof-of-work. This is where miners solve complex math problems competing to validate blocks. The process is pretty energy expensive and certainly difficult to scale. Centralization can also be an issue, as now massive and expensive mining farms dominate most proof-of-work networks, which has largely pushed out individual miners. There are, however, other ways. Proof-of-stake is one of those other ways. Instead of powerful mining computers, in this system consensus is achieved by a special node operators known as validators. For each block, different validators are chosen by an algorithm instead of competing to validate. In order to become a validator, users must stake a certain amount of Ethereum. We'll go deeper into how you can become a validator yourself in just a bit, but for now know that this means that anyone vying to validate blocks on the network must first put up what is effectively collateral to do so. This is designed to keep the system honest, as actions that break the rules of the network will be punished with a loss of funds, while acting within the prescribed parameters will earn the validators a passive return. This process means that there's no need for a global network of powerful mining farms running 24-7 and hence it is by far more environmentally friendly. It's also highly secure. In a proof-of-work system, there's always a small risk for something called a 51% attack. This means that if, in theory, an attacker could control 51% of the miners on the network, then they could force consensus of any transactions they choose and effectively hijack the whole blockchain. For larger networks like Bitcoin and Ethereum, this is admittedly unlikely. But how does this problem look in a proof-of-stake chain? In proof-of-stake, an attacker would instead need to control 51% of all staked Ethereum in order to attempt the same kind of attack. Much like with running a miner, anyone can stake Ethereum, so being able to control 51% of the stake supply would be a highly expensive attack, and it would be virtually impossible to come out profitable as a result. Next, let's talk about sharding. Sharding is a process that breaks up each block on the blockchain into individual shards. Each shard can be validated independently, meaning that validators only have to process these shards, not the whole blockchain. This validation can then be done in parallel, with many nodes working in tandem in a primary beacon chain that coordinates and finalizes all transactions. The combination of these two improvements is how developers hope the network will be able to process tens of thousands of transactions per second, all while using far less energy than the proof-of-work system currently does. So, how will this affect you if you're already holding Ether? 
The short answer is that it shouldn't. One common misconception is that this upgrade is a blockchain migration. Generally in a migration, users need to perform some action on the new chain to claim any coins they had before the transfer. In the case of Ethereum, however, the currently running chain will simply be connected to, or docked, to 63 other shards, and together, these 64 shards will make up the blockchain for Ethereum 2.0. Neither dApps, exchanges, or any other service should experience significant interruptions. This means that the main effect we'll see will be an improvement in the performance of smart contracts on the network and significantly boosted transaction speeds. This type of throughput, combined with the trustless immutability of the blockchain, should mean that many traditional finance platforms will be given a real run for their money. Will this ultimately lead to Ethereum being adopted as the world's future global computer? We can't say for sure, but it should bring it a huge step closer to this vision. Okay, before we get to explaining how you can get involved yourself, let's take a peek at the proposed timeline for Ethereum 2.0 being rolled out. This will happen in three major phases, and will likely take between one and three years. Phase zero involves launching what we recently referred to as the Beacon Chain. In fact, at the time of recording this, the Beacon Chain recently just went live on December 1st, so the upgrade to Ethereum 2.0 is now officially underway. This Beacon Chain is the first proof-of-stake shard of the new network, and is currently running in parallel with the Ethereum 1.0 blockchain. At this time, the only real thing to do with the Beacon Chain is to stake Ethereum on it so you can become a validator when the fully functional system goes online. More on that in a moment. Phase 1 will be when sharding is implemented. The Beacon Chain will carry on, but the remaining shards will become operational, meaning at this point the two cornerstones of the upgrade, proof of stake and sharding, should be fully functional. There's also a Phase 1.5 that will involve bringing the current Ethereum 1.0 blockchain into the Ethereum 2.0 structure as its own shard, and at this point, the proof of work mining process will come to an end and the blockchain will transform to proof of stake. Finally, in phase two, the entire update should become complete. This is the point where shards begin communicating with each other and full smart contract support will be enabled. Ethereum 2.0 will be fully operational and massively faster than ever before. Okay, as promised, we're gonna explain how you can actually become a validator yourself on the Ethereum 2.0 blockchain. Obviously this process is a little technical, so while we'll cover the basics here, we'll also put links down in the description to more detailed walkthroughs. Okay, here's the general steps you need to take in order to get started validating on Ethereum 2.0. First up, you'll need an Ethereum 1.0 node running in sync to the current chain. For this, you'll need to install an Ethereum client such as Geth. Know that it'll take some time to install this client and to download the latest version of the blockchain. Depending on your internet speed, you may be looking at hours or even days. Nonetheless, this is an essential part of participating in the network, so get this up and running first. Next up, you're gonna want an Ethereum 2.0 instance active as well. For this, you could use Prism, which is just a version of the 2.0 client written in the Go programming language. Again, we'll have links on where to get this and how to install it down in the description. Just understand that you will need clients for both chains at the same time in order to stake your Ethereum. There's another consideration that may turn many off to this endeavor. The minimum amount of Ethereum required to become a validator is 32 ETH. At current Ethereum prices, just under $600, that comes up to close to $19,000. While that isn't an astronomical amount of money, it is an amount that many people would be hard-pressed to even invest into Ethereum to begin with, much less than commit to being staked on an experimental new chain for several years. If you do decide to become a validator, consider buying your Ethereum from the Stormgain cryptocurrency exchange. Stormgain is not only one of the hottest up-and-coming exchanges out there, it also offers several valuable perks such as a loyalty program, bonuses for referrals, annual interest on crypto deposits, and using the official app you can even begin cloud mining cryptocurrency for free. If you want to be a validator, you're going to need to get that Ethereum from somewhere, and Stormgain offers a bit more than most other exchanges, so check them out! Okay, that should give you a pretty firm basis for understanding what Ethereum 2.0 is going to bring to the table. As you can see, it stands to take all of the good that DeFi has begun to do in the world and supercharges it. This could be the very thing that triggers global mass adoption, and unless another blockchain can do it better or faster, Ethereum is looking to be leading this revolution. Even if you're not looking to get involved in the network directly by becoming a validator, you're still going to want to keep up to date on the latest developments. For that, check us out on beincrypto.com, as well as right here on our YouTube channel. As I always say, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again here real soon.